Hello everyone and welcome back to my physiology playlist. We will do chapter number 59 today from unit number 11 and this chapter is very important and very close to my heart because it actually deals with the limbic system and the hypothalamus because these systems of your brain are actually connected with the behavioral and motivational mechanisms of the so jo bhi aapke behavioral responses hain pyar mohabbat nafrat tujhe dekha to ye jana dil to pagal hai deewana sanam type of things they are all associated with your limbic system and your long term memory formation is associated with limbic system so very very important chapter main aise kehta hu ki ye bahut hi emotional chapter hai to is emotional chapter ko start karte hain the control of the behavior is a function of entire nervous system obviously sirf limbic system isme akela kaam nahi karta but limbic system plays an important role in this chapter we deal first with the mechanisms of the control activity in different parts of the brain then we discuss particularly the limbic system or limbic system ko hum jitne uh, uh, mein jab discuss karenge so we'll also talk about how hypothalamus is controlling limbic system very important chapter it is going to be for your examinations perspective now activating driving the systems of the brain so this word activating is very important to me because brain aapka kaam aise karta hai ki what actually incites the brain hai na without continuous transmission of nerve signals from the lower brain into the cerebrum the cerebrum becomes useless because cerebrum is the control center sitting right there at the top it needs input isko feedback nahi milega to ye kuch bhi kaam nahi kar sakta it will be a sitting dark so the nerve signals in the brain stem activate the cerebrum in two ways number 1 by directly stimulating a background level of neuronal activity in wide areas of the brain and number 2 by activating the neurohormonal systems which will facilitate either the inhibition or excitation of different parts of the brain so niche brain stem se signals ne aana so you see here this is the brain stem area this is the higher center yahan se excitatory or inhibitory ja kar ke information milegi cortex ko tabhi cortex properly function karega Okay, now reticular excited areas of the brain stem are driver of the brain activity. Figure fifty nine one. This particular figure, it shows a general system for controlling the activity of the brain. The central driving component of this system is an excited area, which is known as the reticular substance of the pons and the mesencephalon, and this area is also known as the bulbo reticular facilitatory area. Or ये हमने I mean neurophysiology में पहले भी discuss किया हुआ है but the point basically is कि we have an excitatory area, we have an inhibitory area, and from these areas fibers go to the higher centers of the brain and control their activity. That's all which you have to remember. Okay? Then the excitation of the reticular excitatory area by peripheral nerve signals. अब ये जो excitatory और inhibitory area है obviously they require peripheral signals जो आके इन्हें stimulate करेंगे और फिर ये fibers भेजेंगे higher centers of the brain में और फिर वो stimulate होंगे. So the level of activity of the reticular excitatory area in the brain stem and therefore the level of activity in the entire brain is determined to a great extent by the number and type of sensory signals which come to the brain aur ye kahan se aa rahe hain sensory signal from the peripheral parts of the body pain signals for example increase the activity in the excitatory area and therefore strongly excite the brain to attention yani if this is you standing aur aapke ye haath pe yahan pe koi pinch kar raha hai to ye sensory input jayegi brain stem tak it will excite the excitatory area and the brain taki ye jo painful stimulus hai ye register ho the importance of these peripheral sensory signal in activating the excitatory area is demonstrated by the fact ke uh, if you cut the brain stem above the point where the fifth cerebral nerve enter the pons these nerves are the highest nerve entering the brain by the way aur agar aap is jagah ko kaat de then you know sensory signals are all gone and therefore the level of activity in the brain excitatory areas diminishes so the point is ki aapka jo higher center hai yani ki cerebral cortex hai isko input chahiye brain stem se brain stem ko input chahiye from the peripheral sensory fibers to tab ye system pura driving karega bada nahi now increase activity of the excitatory area caused by feedback signals returning from the cerebral cortex ये जो एक्साइटेटरी सिग्नल्स हैं ये सिर्फ पेरिफरल एरिया से नहीं आते दे आल्सो कम फ्रॉम द पॉजिटिव फीडबैक के मैकेनिज्म की शेप में फ्रॉम डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द ब्रेन एज वेल इस पूरे पैराग्राफ का क्रक्स ये है कि द ब्रेन नॉट ओनली यू नो इज रिसीविंग इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द ब्रेन स्टेम द ब्रेन स्टेम इज नॉट ओनली रिसीविंग इंफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द पेरिफरी देयर इज अ सर्किटरी लूप विद इन द ब्रेन एज वेल व्हिच इज द फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म The thalamus is distribution center that controls the activity of the specific regions of the cortex. Neuro anatomy. If you have followed me with me, then you will know that your thalamus is right in the center of the whole game in uh, in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. The center of the whole game in your body. 
then a reticular inhibitory area is also located. So, just like we have the excitatory area, we talked about there is also an inhibitory area. Nothing fancy about it. One of the mechanism for this is neurotransmitters, serotonin. Okay, that's in the inhibitory area. No big deal. Now, neurohormonal control of the brain activity. Aside from the direct control of the brain activity by specific transmission of nerve signals from the lower brain areas to the cortical regions of the brain, still another physiological mechanism is often used to control the brain activity. And this mechanism is to secrete the excitatory or the inhibitory neurotransmitters, which then accordingly either excite some parts of the brain or inhibit some parts of the brain. So, animal studies say that. Uh, the major um, neurohormonal systems hai, wo they include either the norepinephrine system, a dopamine system, or the serotonin system. Norepinephrine usually functions as the excitatory hormone. You know, the dopamine and serotonin are largely inhibitory hormones. Okay. Now, neurohormonal system in the human brain, ye hum experimental animals ki baat kar rahe it's very much similar, by the way. If you look at figure 59.3, which is this particular figure, uh, it demonstrates that the brain stem areas in human brain for activating four neurohormonal systems and the three. Uh, the same three discussed for the rat, yani ke epi, norepinephrine, dopamine, and serotonin, and then there is another one which is called acetylcholine system. Some of the specific functions of these systems are as follows. So that's an important discussion for you to remember, okay? Now, uh, the locus serialis and the norepinephrine system is a small area located bilaterally and posteriorly, the junction between the pons and the mesencephalon. Nerve fibers from this area are spread throughout the brain. The same as shown for the rat in the top frame, 59 2 may. So it gets it gets out from there, goes to different parts of the cerebral cortex and different parts of the uh, central nervous system. The non-epinephrine generally excites the brain to increase activity. So that's an excitatory stuff. However, it has inhibitory effect in some parts of the brain as well. Um, and uh, it is somehow also linked with the rapid eye movement during the sleep, but that is not the topic here. Then we have substantia Niagara and dopamine system. So this is basically inhibitory pathway. And you know this, uh, that dopamine is an inhibitory pathway. And we have done those uh, Niagara striatal and all these pathways in detail again in neuroanatomy. Then the raffin nuclei and serotonin system. This is another system which is a suppressor system. So it has the ability to suppress, for example, pain kind of inhibitory pathways. Then we have gigantocellular neuro neurons of reticular excitatory and acetylcholine system. So they are, because they are, you know, uh, giant cell kisat in association, and they are called gigantocellular neurons, which uh, utilize acetylcholine. The neurohormone, obviously, from this system is the acetylcholine. In most places, it functions as an excitatory neurotransmitter, okay? But there are examples it can also be inhibitory. So it's not a hard, fast rule. So this, for example, is a very important diagram because up to the discussion, it is very well summarized here. So if you look here, there is the nuclei of Raffae area, which uses serotonin as its neurotransmitter inhibitory most of the times. If you look here, this is the locus seroleus, and this uses norepinephrine, usually excitatory. Then there is gigantocellular neurons, acetylcholine, and then there is substantia nigra using another inhibitory hormone known as dopamine. So this diagram very nicely summarizes different parts which are using different neurotransmitters for controlling activities of the brain. Okay. Now, there are other neurotransmitters as well. Without describing their function, the following is a partial list of still other neurotransmitters. They include, um, I mean, there is a long list basically, including encaphalins, gamma minor butyrics, glutamine, vasopressin, uh, whatnot, alpha melanocyte stimulating. It's a long list of neurotransmitters. Just to tell you that there is actually a long list, okay? So, with this basic information that how our system is working, let us start moving on to understanding the limbic system. Limbic system the word hai, iske literal meanings hai, uh, border. So the word limbic system basically literally means border. Originally, the term limbic was used to describe the border structures around the basal region of the cerebrum. But as we have learned more about the functions of the limbic system, the term limbic system has been expanding to mean the entire neuronal circuitry 
दैट कंट्रोल्स द इमोशनल बिहेवियर सो पहले ये मतलब एनाचामी के लिए अगर आप देखें सो इट वॉज मेयरली लाइक यू नो बॉर्डर टाइप ऑफ थिंग जो बॉर्डर कर रहा है बिटवीन सर्टन पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन बट अब वी नो के इट इज वेरी वेल कनेक्टेड विद डिफरेंट पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन एंड इट इज नॉट ओनली बॉर्डरिंग इट्स नॉट मेयरली एनाचामिकल स्ट्रक्चर जस्ट डूइंग न थिंग इट इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इमोशनल टूल ऑफ द ब्रेन सो सारा इमोशन रिवॉर्ड सेंटर्स पनिशमेंट सेंटर कोई चीज अच्छी लग रही है कोई चीज बुरी लग रही है तुम्हें देखा तो ये जाना सरम टाइप ऑफ चीज ये सारा कुछ इज द इज द जॉब ऑफ लिम्बिक सिस्टम ओके अ मेजर पार्ट ऑफ द लिम्बिक सिस्टम इज हाइपोथेलमस वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट इंटीग्रल पार्ट एंड इट्स रिलेटेड स्ट्रक्चर इन एडिशन टू देयर रोल्स इन बिहेवियरल कंट्रोल दीज एरियाज ऑल्सो कंट्रोल वेरी इंटरनल कंडीशन ऑफ द बॉडी सच इज टेम्परेचर सच इज भूख लगना प्यास लगना सेक्चुअल ड्राइव गुस्से की ड्राइव प्यार मोहब्बत की ड्राइव ये सारी चीजें आर कंट्रोल बाय द लिम्बिक सिस्टम ओके और ये जो इंटरनल फंक्शन का कंट्रोल है ना सारा दिस इज ऑल कलेक्टिवली कॉल द वेजिटेटिव फंक्शन ऑफ योर बॉडी फंक्शनल एनाडमी अगेन फॉर एनाडमी आई स्ट्रॉगली रेकमेंड दैट यू गो थ्रू माई न्यूरो एनाडमी लेक्चर जो मैंने इस नैल से करवाए हैं बट एनी वेज यहाँ फिजियोलॉजी में चूंकि रिपीट हो रही है तो मैं करा भी देता हूँ फिगर फिफ्टी नाइन फोर वेयर इट इज फिफ्टी नाइन फोर कमॉन दैट इज द फिगर जो आपको एनाटमिकल डिटेल्स बताएगी पूरे लिम्बिक सिस्टम की कि कहां पे हाइपोथैलेमस है हिपोकैम्पस की तरह सो दिस फिगर शोज द एनाटमिकल स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द लिम्बिक सिस्टम डिमॉन्स्ट्रेटिंग दैट दे आर इंटरकनेक्टेड कॉम्प्लेक्स ऑफ बेजल ब्रेन एलिमेंट्स लोकेटेड इन द मिडल ऑफ दीज स्ट्रक्चर इज द हाइपोथैलेमस विच फॉर्म अ फिजियोलॉजिकल पॉइंट ऑफ व्यू is which from a physiological point of view is one of the central elements in the limbic system so hypothalamus is right in the center if you see this hypothalamus is right in the center and it connects with different parts of the limbic system and also to different parts of the brain so if you see figure 595 which will illustrate systematic schematically this key position of the hypothalamus in the limbic system because is hypothalamus mein different parts of the limbic system se na sirf ye ke inputs aayenge balki is hypothalamus se teen outputs niklenge bhi one towards the brain stem one towards the cerebral cortex and one to the pituitary so ye teen important output nikalne jiske bare mein bhi hum thodi der mein baat karenge surrounding the subcortical limbic uh, areas in the limbic cortex composed of ring of cerebral cortex on each side of the brain beginning in the orbito frontal area on the ventral surface of the frontal lobe and extending upward in the subcalosol so too much anatomical detail not concerned with physiology here please refer to my neuro anatomy lectures mai bar bar keh raha hu anatomy ke liye please mere neuro anatomy ke structures ko aap dekhiye thus on the medial and the ventral surface of each cerebral hemisphere is the ring of uh, paleo cortex uh, Uh, again, I would leave this for neuro anatomy lecture. Okay, Snell का lecture देखो जाके भाई क्योंकि वहाँ anatomy सही detail में बताइए या function की बात कर लेते हैं. So we'll talk more about functions here and what are the functions of hypothalamus in the limbic system. Anatomy you must do from Snell neuro anatomy because that's a specialist book, है ना? मैं हमेशा यहाँ पे अच्छा मुझे कुछ student ना message करके कहते भी हैं कि sir यार आपने यहाँ anatomy छोड़वा दी. देखो भाई बात ये है कि मैंने एक घंटे की video upload कर रखी है इसकी anatomy समझाने में. अब ये फिजियोलॉजी की बुक है इसमें दो पैराग्राफ लिखे हुए छोटे छोटे से एनाटॉमी के ना वो सही से समझ में आएंगे और ना पर्पस फुलफिल होगा फिजियोलॉजी में फंक्शन की बात कर लेते हैं एनाटॉमी में घंटा भर हमने बात की है इसकी एनाटॉमी की सो प्लीज एनाटॉमी वहां से करें और एनाटॉमी के अंदर मैंने फिजियो नहीं पढ़ाई फिजियो के अंदर मैं एनाटॉमी नहीं पढ़ा रहा क्योंकि जस्टिफाई नहीं होता है ना नाउ हेयर कम्स द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट के हाउ डज द हाइपोथेलमस बेसिकली कंट्रोल द होल लिम्बिक सिस्टम इट्स एक्चुअली कंसिडर्ड एज द मेजर कंट्रोल हेडक्वार्टर for the limbic system although hypothalamus you know is very small in size it's only a few cubic uh, centimeters and it weighs only about 4 grams which is uh, such a small uh, mass and uh, such a small size but it has two way communication pathways with all levels of uh, the limbic system in turn the hypothalamus and its closely allied structures send output signals in three directions number one is the backward and downward to the brain stem So this is very important. So you see the location of the hypothalamus as well. It communicates not only with the limbic system to and fro, two directional communication, but its ke jo phir sare processing ke baad the outward signals hain. They go number one to the brain stem, mainly into the reticular areas of the mesencephalon, spons, and the medulla. And number two, the hypothalamus sends its output to the higher areas of the brain, um, higher areas of the diencephalon and cerebrum, especially to the anterior thalamus. as well as to the limbic portions of the cerebral cortex so one it is sending signals down other it is sending signals up and number 
it also sends uh, signals into hypothalamic infundibulum to control or partially control most of the secretory functions uh, for both posterior and anterior pituitary gland so imagine how important the hypothalamic system is but also very important to mention here is the fact that the limbic system is continuously sending feedback to hypothalamus and because of that feedback the hypothalamus then controls its upward signal downward signal and the signals to the pituitary so it's a very key position hypothalamus thus the hypothalamus which represents less than one percent of the total brain mass is one of the most important for controlling uh, different pathways including the limbic system so that's to me is a very important heading and a very important concept okay your hypothalamus is at the central position to control the limbic system and other parts of the brain as well now vegetative and endocrine control functions of the hypothalamus the different hypothalamic mechanisms for controlling multiple functions of the body are so important that they are discussed in multiple different chapters and we have talked about those chapters kuch kar liye hain kuch karenge baad mein yahan chapters ke references diye hue hain ki chapter 18 mein how does it help in maintaining the arterial pressure then thirst water conversation in conservation in chapter 30 then uh, appetite and energy in chapter 72 so the point is that hypothalamus is super duper busy in different parts of your body um, the next figure that we will see in a minute show in large sagittal and coronal views of the hypothalamus which represent only uh, a very small area so let's have a look at fig figure 596 so that's uh, a section through hypothalamus and you see so many different uh, parts which are extremely important so just have a look there are in the anterior side there are parventricular nuclei there are medial preoptic nucleus they're all you see the functions associated with them so oxytocin ka release water conservation satiety which means hunger all being controlled by hypothalamus then bladder contraction heart rate blood pressure body temperature uh, sweating panting thyrotropin inhibition optic nerve so i would say that's an extremely important machinery of your body aur ye sari cheeze abhi ye diagram agar aap yaad kar lete ho to abhi jitna bhi text hum dekh rahe hain wo sara text aapko clear ho jayega so this is one section and this is then that's the uh, sagittal view and then if you look at the uh, coronal view now you see the same nuclei in a different orientation but all these nuclei are the same which are represented here i would say it's much more clearer here so go through them very carefully okay now one by one inki headings hum dekhte jayenge and then uh, we will see ki cardiovascular function pe kya effect hai hypothalamus ka and so on and so forth so let's have a look at the cardiovascular regulation first stimulation of different art, uh, areas throughout the hypothalamus can cause many neurogenic effects on the cardiovascular system including changes in the arterial pressure as well as the heart rate in general stimulation of the posterior and the lateral hypothalamus increases the arterial pressure and heart rate whereas stimulation of the preoptic area has a positive effect it decreases the heart rate okay so this is something for you to remember these effects are transmitted mainly through specific cardiovascular control centers in the reticular region of the pons in the medulla main aapko bataya tha ki hypothalamus se teen jagahon pe output nikal ke jate hain so one goes towards uh, ब्रेन स्टेम की तरफ नीचे जाता है जहाँ ये पॉन्स मेटोला ये चीज़ें एंड वन गोज टू द सेरिब्रल हेमिसफेयर्स एंड द अदर वन गोज टू द पिचोट्री डायरेक्टली सो दिस इज द कार्डियोवास्कुलर कंट्रोल देन द बॉडी टेम्परेचर रेगुलेशन व्हिच इज मेनली टेकन केयर बाय द प्री ऑप्टिक एरिया देन वाटर रेगुलेशन थर्स्ट मैकेनिज्म सो देर आर टू मैकेनिज्म इन्वॉल्व वन इज बाई क्रिएशन creating the sensation of thirst aapko pyaas lagegi which drives the animal or the person to drink water and the other one is by controlling the excretion of water into the urine so if the body requires for example water the osmolarity is going high the kidneys are directed not to release water and the person is required to drink water by these two mechanisms the water balance of the body comes back to the normal now renal excretion jo water ki it is mainly controlled by the supraoptic uh, nuclei and aapko pata hai ki how this is all connected with the antidiuretic hormone we have done this in renal physiology but again what i am doing is i am picking up a heading ki cardiovascular system par hypothalamus ka kya role hai and uh, you should know ki it also increases the blood pressure it also decreases the blood pressure the posterior hypothalamus for example increase the blood pressure but then we have in the anterior part uh, areas which actually decrease the blood pressure so both things happen you need to know ki anteriorly kya ho raha hai posteriorly kya ho raha hai then you need to know ki water centers uh what are the you know effect on water conservation so paraventricular nuclei are very important there so pick up a heading and uh, know what is happening so this is going to be a very important diagram for this part of this uh, chapter 
it also and when i say it it means hypothalamus also controls uterine contractility and milk ejection because uh, paraventricular nuclei jo hai, they are geared for oxytocin release okay at the end of the pregnancy especially large quantities of oxytocin are secreted and this secretion helps promote uh, labor uterine contractions as well as later on ejection of milk through the nipples so hypothalamus is involved in there then GI functions and feeding regulation and satiety stimulation of several areas of hypothalamus causes an animal to experience extreme hunger um, appetite uh, wala mamla, bhook wala mamla. one area associated with hunger is the lateral hypothalamic area conversely damage to this area on both the sides of the hypothalamus causes animal to lose desire for food so this experimental animals we see that if lateral hypothalamic area is removed then the animal doesn't feel wow a center that opposes the desire for food called the satiety center is in the ventromedial nucleus when this center is stimulated electrically an animal that is eating food suddenly stops eating ho oh, oh, ho oh. so these are all the experimental details that you should remember then the arcuate nucleus of hypothalamus contains at least two different type of neurons which are when stimulated lead either to increase or decrease appetite okay area uh, of hypothalamus that enters into the overall control of the gi activity is the mammillary body another name you should remember which control at least partially the patterns of many feeding reflexes such as licking the lips swallowing is a kind of associated in a mammillary body so so far you are gaining uh, and accumulating knowledge ke hypothalamus kya kya kaam kar hai. then it is obviously important for endocrine function is but already bad career it releases a lot of uh, releasing inhibitory factors it is also important to maintain circadian rhythms it's a very very important function the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the hypothalamus contains about 20,000 neurons and is located above the optic chiasm where the optic nerves crosses underneath the hypothalamus jo humne already kiya wo bhi hai baise the neurons of the suprachiasmatic uh, nucleus basically serve as a master clock with a pacemaker firing frequency that follows the circadian rhythm aapka body ka internal timing ka control this pacemaker functions uh, function is critical for organizing sleep into a recurring 24 hour circulation pattern of sleeping and awaking aapko ek fixed time pe neend aati hai fixed time pe aap uthte hain aur kuch dino agar aap for example india se travel karke ja rahe hain to usa then there is a time lag between india and usa idhar ka din udhar ki raat udhar ki raat udhar ka din lekin aapki body ko adjust hone mein thoda time lagta hai kyunki aapki body ka circadian rhythm set hota hai with one particular cycle isiliye jab aap yahan pahunchte hain ya yahan se yahan pahunchte hain so we use a term called jet lag kyunki phir aapki body ke circadian rhythm ko set hone mein thoda sa time lagta hai okay and this type of circadian rhythm is very important to your um, you know uh, health because uh, there is actually a particular field now being developed known as the chronobiology uh, in which uh, there is a study of the circadian rhythms in 2017 for example there was a nobel prize in physiology and medicine to jeffrey hall michael roshbash and uh, michael young for the discoveries of the molecular mechanisms which are associated with circadian rhythms in fruit fly which is drosophila melanogaster so uh, point ye hai ki jo circadian rhythm ki studies hai circadian rhythm pe research hai it's very important i mean there are people who sleep very less there are people who sleep very more so how about studying those people and following it for different diseases and their lifestyles and patterns so that's becoming a very very important and interesting area of research these days okay now Uh, key components of the clock mechanism of the uh, suprachiasmatic nuclei and in other tissues are two feedback loops that rely on the transcriptional activators known as clock and bimali which bind to each other um, and following translocation of the nucleus initiate the transcription of clock gene or clock genes kon kon si hai body mein per 1 per 2 and per 3 and the other set of genes which are activated are called cryptochrome genes uh, which are cry1 and cry2 इंपॉर्टेंट यार अगर ये आप याद रखते हैं एग्जामिनर को बताते हैं तो एग्जामिनर विल बी इंप्रेस्ड मैं एग्जाम में होता तो आई वुड हैव बीन इंप्रेस्ड कि आपको ये जीन्स पता है दीज जीन्स टर्न ऑन सिंथेसिस ऑफ द पर एंड क्राई प्रोटीन एज द प्रोटीन एक्यूमुलेट द इनहिबिट द क्लॉक एंड बी मैली देर बाय रिप्रेसिंग द पर एंड द क्राई ट्रांसक्रिप्शन और जो पूरा फीडबैक मैकेनिज्म है ये सीक्वेंस ऑफ ऑन ऑफ पर क्राई प्रोटीन सिंथेसिस नॉर्मली अकर्स इन 24 फोर आवर्स रिकार्ड इन पैटर्न सो ये प्रोटीन एक्सप्रेस होती हैं फिर ये प्रोटीन एक्सप्रेस नहीं होती एंड इट इज बिलीव दैट दे हैव समथिंग टू डू विद द स्लीप एंड अवेक साइकिल्स वंस द सुप्राकैसमेटिक न्यूक्लियस क्लॉक हैज बीन इस्टेब्लिश इट्स रिकार्ड इन रिदम दिस इन्फॉर्मेशन इज ट्रांसमिटेड टू अदर ब्रेन रीजन एंड वेल दिस इज नॉट इम्पॉर्टेंट पैराग्राफ not important and the summary is 
that the hypothalamus control is specific vegetative as well as endocrine functions of the body. The functions of these areas are not fully understood. Important. I am very happy that the CNS functioning is not completely understood. This is something that we are still trying to understand. But whatever we know is beautiful. We know that hypothalamus is involved in a lot of things. Okay, So this is the role of hypothalamus in different functions of the body. Then behavioral functions of hypothalamus and associated limbic structures. So effects caused by stimulation of hypothalamus. In addition to vegetative and endocrine functions, which we have discussed, ki hai, stimulation or lesions. Now, see, you can understand the work of any organ in two ways. What you do is, that in an experimental animal, you activate a particular part of the brain especially and see what the difference is between it. तो फिर आप ये तय करेंगे कि इसका ये काम है या एक स्पेसिफिक पार्ट ऑफ द ब्रेन को आप निकाल दें और फिर देखें कि क्या फर्क पड़ रहा है तो उससे भी पता लगेगा इस ऑर्गन का जिसको निकाल दिया इसका ये काम था सिंपल एग्जांपल दूं अगर आप आंख निकाल दो तो आपको नजर नहीं आएगा दिस इज हाउ यू नो गाइस इसका काम है कि आप देख सकते हैं इससे है ना सो so, इस तरह एक्सपेरिमेंट्स में करते हैं तो यहां भी जब हाइपोथैलेमस के साथ उसको निकाल के देखा गया या स्टिमुलेशन करके देखा गया सो व्हाट दे फाउंड वाज दे हैव ऑफन प्रोफाउंड इफेक्ट्स ऑन इमोशनल बिहेवियर ऑफ द एनिमल्स also of human being so isse ye pata lagta hai ki hypothalamus ka emotional control mein ek bahut important role hai when jab kabhi emotional system beech mein aata hai to aapko pata hai ki limbic system ka naam lena lazmi hai so that is how we know ki the hypothalamus is very closely working with the limbic system to control different emotions of the body okay so there are some effects which you must remember so for example stimulation in the lateral hypothalamus not only causes thirst and eating as discussed earlier but also increases the general level of activity of the animal sometimes leading to overt rage and fighting so these are emotional behaviors which are also associated with lateral hypothalamus then stimulation of the ventromedial nucleus and surrounding areas mainly cause effects opposite to those caused by the lateral so satiety pet bhar gaya yahan bhook lag rahi thi yahan pet bhar gaya decrease eating kam kha rahe and tranquility so ladai jhagde kam is ventromedial ladai jhagde zyada is lateral hypothalamus by the way lateral ladai oh ha ye acha yaar l se ladai l se lateral now stimulation of thin zone of the periventricular nuclei located immediately adjacent to the third ventricle usually leads to fear and punishment reaction so these are the again areas of hypothalamus associated with some emotional output sexual drive can be stimulated from several areas of hypothalamus especially most anterior and most posterior portion so these are some examples of your uh, social behaviors which are affected by hypothalamus and if there are hypothalamic lesions so bilateral lesion for example in the lateral hypothalamus will cause decrease in eating decrease in sare passive animal ho jayega ladai jhagda nahi karega so jo kaam uske karne ke the wo ab sare zero se multiply ho gaya अगर वेंटिरो मीडियल रीजन में बायोलेटरल लॉस हो जाएगा तो ऑपोजिट फंक्शन हो जाएंगे जो इस जगह का काम करता करने का था सो फॉर एग्जांपल देयर विल बी एक्सेसिव ड्रिंकिंग एक्सेसिव ईटिंग एंड लड़ाई झगड़ा क्योंकि वेंटिरो मीडियल न्यूक्लियस क्या करता था कम खिलाओ कम पिलाओ लड़ाई झगड़ा नहीं करो कोई मारपीट अच्छी बात नहीं है अब जब ये वेंटिरो मीडियल न्यूक्लियस खराब हो जाएगा तो ज्यादा खिलाओ ज्यादा पिलाओ लड़ाई झगड़ा अच्छी बात है दैट सॉर्ट ऑफ थिंग ओके सो इजी स्टफ Now the next heading talks about the reward and punishment functions of the limbic system. Now from the discussion so far, अभी तक हमने जितनी बातें की हैं, it is already clear that several limbic system structures are particularly concerned with the affective nature of sensory sensation, which means whether the sensations are pleasant or unpleasant. ठीक है ना? These affective qualities are also called reward or punishment or satisfaction or reward. अलग एक ही चीज के अलग-अलग नाम हैं. Electrical stimulation of certain limbic areas pleases or satisfies the animals, whereas stimulation of other areas causes terror, pain, opposite reaction. The degree of stimulation of these two oppositely responding systems greatly affect the behavior of the animal. Obviously, if you are happy, you behave differently. If you are not happy, you behave differently. That's a very common thing, and that is, uh, you know, being controlled by your limbic system. Now, we have some centers in the brain which are called the reward centers. Through experimental studies using electrical stimulation to map out the reward and punishment centers in the brain, the major reward centers have been found to be along the course of the medial fore brain bundle, especially in the lateral and the ventromedial nuclei of the hypothalamus. So these are the reward centers. Uh, yani, ye area agar stimulate honge, then you feel very good, very happy, very you know energetic, and those sort of thing. Then we also have some punishment centers, and those punishment centers are kind of uh, Uh, you know the most potent areas of the punishment and escape uh, tendencies 
have been found in the central grey area surrounding the Aedic aqueduct of Silvius in the mesencephalon. Less potent punishment areas are found in some locations in the amygdala. It is particularly interesting that stimulation in the punishment centers can frequently inhibit the reward center and pleasure centers completely. So if you have seen movie, na, Robot Wali Chitti, Chitti version 2.0. उसके अंदर सारे के सारे पनिशमेंट सेक्टर्स एक्टिवेटेड हैं रिवॉर्ड सेंटर्स इनहिबिटेड हैं ये वाली कहानी है ठीक है नाउ एसोसिएशन ऑफ रेज विद पनिशमेंट सेंटर एन इमोशनल पैटर्न दैट इन्वॉल्व्स द पनिशमेंट सेंटर ऑफ द हाइपोथैलेमस एंड अदर लिम्बिक स्ट्रक्चर एंड दैट हैज आल्सो बीन वेल कैरेक्टराइज्ड एज द रेज पैटर्न स्ट्रांग स्टिमुलेशन ऑफ पनिशमेंट सेंटर्स ऑफ द ब्रेन स्पेशली इन द पेरी वेंट्रिकुलर जोन ऑफ द हाइपोथैलेमस एंड द लेटरल हाइपोथैलेमस कॉजेस द एनिमल टू डेवलप Uh, you know, a defense posture. Then, लड़ाई में अपने आप defense करेगा ये. Extends its claws, लड़ने के लिए तैयार. Lifts its tail, भागने के लिए तैयार. Hiss, spits, growl, and develop pile reaction. So all these things are the animal is ready to fight. Dilated pupil, wide open eyes. Furthermore, even the slightest provocation causes the animal to savage attack. अब इस पॉस्चर में अगर कोई एनिमल खड़ा है इमेजिन अ डॉग इन दिस ट्रीज स्टैंडिंग इन दिस पॉस्चर उसको जरा सा छेड़ोगे मारेगा पकड़ के एंड दिस बिहेवियर इज देन नोन एज द रेज बिहेवियर ओके ना फॉर्चुनेटली इन अ नॉर्मल एनिमल द रेज फिनोमिना इज हेल्ड इन चेक मेनली बाय इनहिबिटरी सिग्नल्स फ्रॉम अदर पार्ट्स ऑफ द हाइपोथैलेमस सच एज द वेंट्रोमीडियल न्यूक्लियाई बट इफ यू प्रोवोक एन एनिमल यू नो यू हैव टू पे द प्राइस ना प्लासिडिटी एंड टेमनेस एग्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट इमोशन Occurred when reward centers are stimulated. So this is like being happy, everything is fine, and the reward centers are stimulated, not the fighting and the rage centers. Okay, so punishment centers are not not uh, activated in this time. Importance of reward or punishment on behavior. Almost everything that we do is related in some way to reward and punishment. That's true. If you know this is something which is going to make me happy, um, so my behavior will be affected in the same direction. If I know there is something which is going to make me unhappy, my behavior will be accordingly. Okay. Effect of tranquilizers on reward and punishment centers. Administration of tranquilizers such as clo. Promazine usually inhibits both the reward and the punishment centers. Top ke emotions to gay farig. Importance of reward and punishment in learning and memory. Habituation versus reinforcement. Very important concept. Animal experiments have shown that a sensory experience that causes neither reward nor punishment is hardly remembered. आपको वो चीज़ याद ही नहीं रहती जो आपको कोई इम्पैक्ट नहीं करती सो फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ यू हैड एन इवेंट ना इससे आपका रिवॉर्ड सेंटर स्टिमुलेट हुआ ना पनिशमेंट सेंटर स्टिमुलेट हुआ यानी कोई अच्छी चीज़ भी नहीं लगी बुरी चीज़ भी नहीं लगी भाई वो आपको याद ही नहीं रहेगी आपकी मेमोरी बनने में रिवॉर्ड सेंटर और पनिशमेंट सेंटर कोई काम हुआ आपके एग्जाम में अच्छे नंबर आए ओ यू फील हैप्पी योर रिवॉर्ड सेंटर इज स्टिमुलेटेड यू विल रिमेंबर दिस आपके एग्जाम में बुरे नंबर आए योर पनिशमेंट सेंटर इज एक्टिवेटेड यू विल रिमेंबर दिस बट इन ऑर्डर टू रिमेंबर समथिंग your center any one of them has to be stimulated okay so that was very important section of this chapter and now let us talk about some specific functions of some other parts of the limbic system so for example let's talk about hippocampus now hippocampus ki anatomy abhi unhone explain ki hai already ye hum neuro anatomy style se kar chuke hain but very quickly hippocampus is an elongated portion of the cerebral cortex that folds inward to form the ventral surface of the inside of the lateral ventricle प्लीज गो टू माई न्यूरो एनेडमी लेक्चर्स टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट ओके एक एंड पर इट अबर्ट्स द एमेक्टिलॉइड न्यूक्लियस एंड अलॉन्ग इट्स लिटल बॉर्डर इट फ्यूजेज विद द पैरा हिपोकैम्पल गैरस ये एनाटमिकल डिटेल्स है नाउ द हिपो कैंपस हैज न्यूमरस बट मेनली इनडायरेक्ट कनेक्शन विद मेनी पोर्शन ऑफ द सेल्बल कॉटेक्स दिस इज नॉट एनीथिंग न्यू डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द ब्रेन आर कनेक्टेड विद डिफरेंट पार्ट्स ऑफ द ब्रेन as well as with the basal structures such as the limbic system it is connected very well also with mammillary bodies and hypothalamus and amygdala almost any type of sensory experience causes activation of at least some part of the hippocampus very important line so almost any sensory input is also going to stimulate your hippocampus that's very important point very very important point in fact sometimes it is so hyper excitable that uh, iski slight uh, agar excitation ho jaye so it can lead to seizures formation itna ye iski hyper excitability report hui hai theek hai now uh, jo important function aapko yaad rakhna hai hippocampus ka it has been very strongly linked with your memory profile aapke memory functioning ke sath ye involved hai so agar hippocampus ke partial portions ya full hippocampus remove kar diye jaye and that has been by the way performed in humans for the treatment of epilepsy because epilepsy epilepsy mein there is over excitation of that part so kuch part iska nikal diya jata hai and that is used as a treatment for epilepsy 
तो इफ यू डू दैट अगर आप ये हिपो कैंपस के पार्ट को रिमूव कर दे दो पीपल कैन रिकॉल मोस्ट प्रीवियसली लर्न मेमोरी सेटिस्फैक्टरली हाउ एवर लिसन टू दिस वेरी केयरफुली पुरानी यादें उनकी ठीक रहती हैं लेकिन दे ऑफ एन कैन लर्न इसेंशियली नो न्यू इन्फॉर्मेशन दैट इज बेस्ड ऑन वर्बल सिम्बॉलिज्म दे ऑफ एन कैन नॉट इवन लर्न द नेम ऑफ द पीपल होम दे कम इन कॉन्टैक्ट एवरी डे सो यानी आज अगर सर्जरी करके हिपो कैंपस को निकाल दे तो पिछला सब याद रहेगा नए आने वाले दिनों का मसला सच कंडीशन इज दैन नोन एज एंटेरोग्रेड यानी फ्यूचरिस्टिक एमनीजिया यानी फ्यूचर की लॉस ऑफ मेमोरी सो दैट्स वेरी कॉमनली सीन इफ यू रिमूव दी हिपो कैंपस ओके सो एंटेरोग्रेड एमनीजिया आपने वर्ड याद रखना है हिपो कैंपस इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर लर्निंग डे टू डे एक्टिविटीज एंड मेकिंग मेमोरीज Now, theoretical function of hippocampus in learning the hippocampus originated as part of the olfactory cortex in many lower animals this cortex plays essential role in determining whether the animal will eat a particular food bahut se animals jaise aaj bhi hain aapko pata hai jo smell karke khana decide karte hain khana ke nahi khana they make memory they make decisions based on that and since the hippocampus has an evolutionary background from the olfactory system therefore it is also linked with memory formation that's the bottom line of this whole paragraph therefore a person rapidly becomes habituated to indifferent stimuli but learns assiduously any sensory experience that causes either pleasure or pain so anything which gives you pleasure or pain anything which excites your pleasure center or the reward center or the punishment center that is something that you are going to remember and there is a role of hippocampus in that memory making okay now it has been suggested that the hippocampus provides the drive that causes translation of short term memory into long term memory that is hippocampus transmits signals that seem to make mind rehearse over and over again and uh, the new information until the permanent storage takes place of that information whatever the mechanism and we don't know the mechanism without the hippocampus consolidation of long term memory does not happen so even if you are reading something if you want to remember it for long term memory your hippocampus is going to work in this particular function okay so remember this bit of hippocampus very important for long term memory formation so basically that's all about this chapter and what an interesting chapter all your emotions all your rewards and punishment being dealt with the limbic system hypothalamus and long term memory by hippocampus so all the very best and we will start a new chapter of physiology in the next video till then take care of yourself subscribe my channel this is professor asif krishi speaking and you are watching dr asif lectures